Welcome to AD Live, an Avery Dennison webinar intended to bring you educational content related to retroreflective sheeting and the traffic safety world. I'm Mo Madar, here to discuss with you the benefits of digitally printing traffic signs and how to specify them. If you're not familiar with the Reflective Solutions Division of Avery Dennison, we're a US-based sheeting manufacturer with a mission to make roads safer. Not only are we a leading manufacturer of retroreflective sheeting used on signs, vehicles, and safety devices, we also offer all the other components needed to make a sign face, from the overlay to the inks to equipment, software, and service. Today, we're a global leader in specification-compliant digital printing. Before we get into the details of digital printing, though, let's take a couple of minutes to review traditional sign fabrication methods just so we're all on the same page. But also to get a better sense of why fabricators started to use digital printers in the first place. Traditionally, fabricators used one of three ways to make signs, depending on the type of sign they were making. Screen printing is probably the most popular and it's used for most high volume regulatory and warning signs. To silk screen a sign, a design is cured into a meshed screen. Screen is then set up on a silk screen table some ink is poured over it, and a squeegee is used to pull the ink across the design and onto the sign sitting under the screen. Generally speaking, setting up a screen operation is expensive because of the space, equipment, and ventilation required. But once done, you can produce a high volume of simple signs fairly quickly, which can be cost effective. The downside is that it creates a lot of wastewater from the ink that needs to be washed off after each run. It also requires handling of fairly caustic chemicals. And each color requires a new setup, so a lot of the efficiencies are lost when making multicolored signs. That's when our second traditional fabrication method, overlay, comes in. When we talk about overlay, we're generally talking about a transparent colored film that is electronically cut with a plotter cutter and then meticulously applied to a sign blank, usually just white sheeting. Overlay is mostly used for lower volume signs such as mile markers, street name signs, multicolored signs, or something you need quickly and you don't have time for silk screen signs to dry, which can take up to 24 hours without a drying oven. The downside to overlay is that it's slow and labor intensive because every character on the sign has got to be weeded by hand. It also creates a lot of non-recyclable waste from the material that gets weeded out and discarded. Screen printing and colored overlays are mostly used for regulatory, warning, and street name signs, basically anything that fits on a 48 inch by 48 inch table, but are not really used for larger guide signs. Most guide signs are made using our third fabrication method, which is direct applied or sheeting on sheeting. For these applications, large extruded panels of aluminum are covered with a background color, usually green here in North America, and then white copy is electronically cut and hand applied to the sign face. Like overlay, direct applying copy can be labor intensive, but in this case, you're making a much larger sign for the time spent. Direct applied signs also generate a lot of waste again because of the white sheeting that is weeded away. The final limitation is that a protective overlay can't be applied to the sign face because of the raised copy, which if you ask this guy standing over an expressway in the Utah desert sun will tell you is a big problem. These three methods, silk screen, overlay and direct applied are considered traditional methods because they've been used to make signs for many decades. But as discussed, each has a list of pros and cons from a sign production standpoint. You can have fast, but it has to be simple. You can have custom, but you generate a lot of waste. So about 10 years ago, more and more sign fabricators started to use digital printers to fill the production gap. Early printers came directly from the graphics industry where they had been used to print on large rolls of film for graphics applications long before the traffic industry started using them. Because from a production standpoint, there are a lot of overlap between graphics industry where the signs are made mostly for ads and the traffic industry. 
course, from a finished product standpoint, there are a lot of differences between commercial prints that only need to last for a few months to regulated traffic signs that serve a critical safety role for 10 to 20 years. And unfortunately, a lack of solutions or directions from sheeting manufacturers and a lack of specifications that address fabrication methods led to some failures. Eventually, as digital printers used for graphics application became more and more prevalent and more sign shops got into digital printing, pressure built on the sheeting manufacturers to develop systems specifically for the traffic safety industry. Avery Dennison, for example, had to address three major areas. First, we had to figure out how to formulate and produce inks that flow through our traffic jet print system but use the same pigments and dyes we use in our silk screens. Second, we had to make sure the chemistry between our sheeting, inks, and overlays were compatible so the finished signs met traffic safety specifications, both for initial performance and long-term durability. And third, we had to create technical service programs that help train and certify sign fabricators in producing compliant traffic signs using our systems, components, and processes specifically for our industry. As a result of innovating on all these fronts, digital printing is often faster, more cost-effective, more user-friendly, better for the environment, and produces a better finished sign. Okay. With fabrication methods and why sign fabricators use digital printers out of the way, let's take a look at some of the benefits of digital printing to agencies, starting with durability. To ensure our solutions addressed fabrication and durability concerns before we launched them in 2013, we conducted a long list of internal and standardized tests on various properties, like we do for any other product that we launch globally. Using the scientific method, we started with a hypothesis and conducted tests to prove ourselves wrong. For example, we hypothesized that if we add a protective overlay with UV stabilizers on top of our current pigments and dyes, we should see much better durability. We then tested against controls that we knew lasted for over 10 years, i.e. existing products, and we compared the results to see how our new formulas performed and if we were wrong about better durability. We then followed the same process for all sorts of internal and standardized tests on adhesion, flexibility, outgassing, thermocycling, handling, printer consistency, serviceability, and much more until we were sure we had a good solution for what fabricators and the industry needed. A common standardized test outlined in ASTM D4956 and accepted internationally is accelerated artificial weathering, which requires 2,000 hours of weathering in a xenon chamber where samples are exposed to extreme UV, moisture levels, and temperature variations. As you can see, even after 10,000 hours, our digital printing materials far exceed today's standards. This is just one of many strong test results that allows us to offer warranties of up to 15 years for our digitally printed solutions. Today, digital printing is allowed on a state level in some form or fashion in over 36 states. And I would be confident saying digitally printed signs are in every state if you consider city and county jurisdictions. I know I'm always happy to see digitally printed signs posted around my neighborhood in Niles, Illinois, and how good they look even after several years, even though the state is still considering their usage. Another benefit of specifying digitally printed signs, which is strongly related to their durability, is protective overlays. All digitally printed traffic signs need to have a clear protective overlay film because it's required as part of the overall finished sign package. The overlay serves two functions. It protects the sign from UV and erosion, giving digitally printed signs better durability, and it creates a glossy surface, which is required to hit daytime and nighttime requirements for color and retroreflectivity. Because the overlay is already required, Agencies have a unique opportunity to add additional value to their traffic signs. 
For example, if your community has graffiti issues, you can specify an anti-graffiti film. If you want to avoid sign legibility issues caused by do, specify an anti-do film. Or you can just choose a standard overlay. The third benefit to agencies is customization. When we talk about regulated traffic signs, you don't typically want creativity or customization. But another benefit of digital printing is that you can have creativity and compliance at the same time. To add to community identity, for example, a multicolor municipality logo can easily be added to street name signs. I'm not saying this is a new concept, but with digital printing, it's easy and durable. Take these two signs, for example. The top sign was printed with a traffic digital printer and a clear overlay was applied to the entire face. The sign below was produced in two separate steps. The green portion was produced by weeding out a green overlay and then a logo was printed on the surface of a clear overlay film using a graphic printer and applied to the sign face like a sticker or decal. And because the sign production is generally the same regardless of the kind of sign, shops are getting orders out in days versus weeks, which means better service, lower inventory costs, and perhaps most importantly, quicker sign replacement, even for unique or custom signs. Finally, digitally printed traffic signs are a smarter choice for the environment. We know that traditional sign fabrication methods use more resources, but to quantify the difference versus digital printing, we work with a third party agency to conduct a life cycle analysis. We can't speak to the impact beyond our business, but here are some of the environmental savings that our customers have had by moving to digital printing. I also wanna note that the impact doesn't stop at the sign itself. Workers in digital sign shops experience a better quality of life at work. And because the signs are on the road longer, road crews can spend less time replacing signs. Seattle, which produces a, a high volume of signs for the city and had a major silkscreen operation, was an early adopter of digital printing nearly six or seven years ago. Since then, they've completely eliminated the need for traditional sign fabrication methods and their employees are all the happier for it. Here's another example that maybe better showcases the benefits we've discussed so far. Safety Network, located in California, utilizes digital printers for their portion of the Caltrans sign contract, which is about 40,000 square feet of sign faces. By digitally printing the signs, they're providing California with better performing signs while also improving the customer experience, all while reducing their impact on the environment. Just by being more efficient on this one contract, again, not needing things like massive ventilation systems or curing ovens and providing more durable signs, they're using less energy and water and they're generating significantly less waste and CO2 emissions. If you're interested in better understanding the environmental impact of a specific job, we do have an environmental impact tool that will allow you to compare traditional methods to digital printing. It's a great way to share the environmental benefits of the choice you're making for your agency. Hopefully you found this information about sign fabrication methods and how digital printing fits in the bigger picture and the benefits this relatively new technology offers agencies and communities helpful. Before we wrap up, I wanna note that as important as the printers, sheeting and other components are, producing a compliant sign also requires skilled fabricators, well-established operations, understanding of specs and much more. That's why when a sign shop purchases a traffic jet system, their employees receive on-site training from our experienced technical teams and are required to send audit samples to our labs where they're measured for color, retroreflectivity, general appearance, and other ASTM requirements. Once everything checks out, the sign shop becomes a certified digital traffic converter or CDTC. The simplest way to ensure you're dealing with a reputable sign shop and reap the benefits we've discussed here is to ask for a CDTC member by including the following language in your specifications. Or you can find a specification guide published by ATSA on our site. 
All right. With that, I would like to thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to visit reflectives.averydenison.com for more information or to contact us. Thank you.